Hey, welcome to this session, Protect Against Ransomware with Offsite Backups. Um, it's really great to join you today. My name is Sam Woodcock. I'm Senior Director of Cloud Strategy at Island, um, based in London. Um, so hopefully we can catch up again in the near future once we all can meet in person. So that'd be great. So again, the topic today is ransomware. And again, what we can do around protection, uh, remediation, and recovery should we ever need it as well. So. Obviously, um, as you probably do, I kind of read the news every day and you can't go pretty much a day or a week without seeing an incident in the news around a security threat or a security incident impacting an organization. Uh, picked out a couple of key examples that I've seen over the last year. Um, obviously, British Airways were fined 20 million uh, for a data breach, for example. Uh, we saw various hotel groups hit with large fines and, and data breaches as well. Uh, and obviously, uh, I guess the conclusion that we can see from this is that um, this threat impacts a wide range of different industries, different organizations and companies. And the impact can be pretty considerable from a monetary value, but obviously we're gonna go into other pieces as well, but obviously it hits the reputation of that company, it's competitive advantage, and also kind of the general sense of confidence that their customers have with the organization as well. So obviously what we're trying to do across the board is try to mitigate and prevent these threats from happening because they have a big impact on organizations, but also provide the tools and the strategies and the security technologies and the recovery technologies to allow you to recover that data should you ever need to and get your customers and your users back up and running with your services as well. So that's the aim of the game here. Uh, again, also, if we look at the, the general security landscape and the landscape of threats that are emerging within the space, I think every year this continues to rise. You can see the statistic on screen, 97% increase uh, from 2019 to 2020 in terms of ransomware attacks. So those specific attacks really growing in terms of um, their impact and their, and their quantity. 67% uh, approximate rise in the average number of general security breaches as well over the last five years. Again, showing that this is a trend, unfortunately, that's on the way up uh, from a security perspective as well. Um, and actually, when we looked at business leaders, 79% of business leaders said that new business models are introducing new technology vulnerabilities. And so, again, this is why we're here today to look at how we can prevent these security incidents from happening, but leveraging offsite backups, providing you as a company with a way to recover that data should you ever need to. Uh, what's also interesting as well is, unfortunately, those cyber criminals are also getting smarter. Obviously, there's more targets. There's different methods and techniques that are growing even more sophisticated. And again, the revenue and reputation impact is pretty large, again, should this happen to an organization. And it's increased as these attacks happen more and more. So again, we understand that, uh, and also people within the National Crime Agency also understand that this is a big issue for organizations. It costs billions of pounds per year and obviously causes large scale incidents. Uh, we also look at generally, obviously, security being a big threat, but there's also other types of threats to data and to availability of applications. And so, again, points to the need of having a protection and prevention strategy as well as a recovery strategy. And, and the four leading causes of downtime and data loss include those external security threats. Again, we mentioned that 97% increase in terms of ransomware attacks, but also malicious in insiders or departing employees, that's actually a big um, threat to organizations. Obviously, employees within your organization have a great deal of control and, and actually permissions to look at your data and, and handle applications on a daily basis. And privilege misuse is actually the second most prevalent cause of cybersecurity incidents today. So again, it's important to have a strategy to look at this specific area of threat to your organization. But alongside that, obviously, retention gaps. Various organizations have the need to store data for multiple years. Uh, or certain large periods of time. And again, it's important to evaluate how long you're storing your data. Do you have a strategy in place that's enabling you to take a backup of that important data, get it off site, and, and really fill those retention policies that you have? Because if you have a gap there, obviously, when you then need to recover the data, that's where it can be a challenge, again, for organizations. And I think every time we do one of these surveys, um, it's surprising to me, but one of the most common forms of data loss, again, that points to the need of having a, a really robust data protection strategy is the, is the fact that humans make errors, right? When we surveyed 1,500 IT professionals, it was surprising to me that, to see that 37% actually suffered a data loss incident due to an accident that happened within their organization. Again, it's really key to have a strategy in place. And actually, if we look at the overall 
landscape of how often these things actually happen. Again, 37 percent from a T security threats at 18 percent retention policy gaps at 19 percent and so again it's really key to make sure that we have a strategy in place to mitigate these types of incidents that may impact your organization and we touched on briefly we saw some of those headlines um, that I picked out around monetary value again the cost of an outage or cost of a data loss incident can be pretty large from a monetary fine perspective or a loss of revenue perspective but there's some intangible costs, obviously, to organizations should these incidents happen. Obviously, a perception of your company from the general market and the customer base, the loyalty of existing customers to your products and services, and generally that confidence level that, that they have that confidence in your services, again, to continue to leverage them on a, on a daily basis and a monthly basis as well. And so we understand the challenges, we understand the threats, I think let's move towards talking about what we can do to defend against these types of threats that we're seeing in the space. Uh, and from my perspective and from Ireland's side, as well as generally the industry, it's important to have a multi-layered data protection strategy. And what I mean by a multi-layered data protection strategy is it's the need to prevent and protect your data, first of all. So we need to make sure that we're putting in place curated technology a security culture in the organization to constantly be understanding how can we harden the applications in our business, make sure that we're doing as much as possible to prevent uh, these malicious um, folks actually doing our business harm, having clear processes in place so that as we change applications, as we generate new applications, as we do new testing, that we're putting clear processes from a change control perspective to make sure that as that product goes to market, as that application goes online, that it's preventing and protecting against data loss and malicious folks willing to as harm as well. Also, specialized expertise coming into play as well. So looking to the general market, how can you as a business look to bring in some of the expertise from a security perspective? How can you look to bring in expertise from a data protection and recovery side of things? Again, all of these different areas are brought together to make sure that we have a good strategy that's, again, preventing and protecting our data and our applications. But also, we also know that maybe something will always happen. Again, we pointed to the human error part. We may have security covered, but there's ultimately going to be a need at some point to actually recover the data seamlessly, quickly, and get your, your organization back up and running. And the reality is, I think in another survey, I don't have it on screen right now, but we looked at organizations around 1,500 again, and over, I think, 50% have actually had an outage or a data loss incident caused by some um, threat within the last six months. So again, so regardless of whether your data resides, whether that's on-premises, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's leveraging SaaS solutions like Office 365, for example, we need to have all of these things covered, again, to allow us to seamlessly recover and protect our data. Um, what was interesting to me is, as we look towards different security best practices, one of them is the CIA slash AIC triad. Um, this is a lot of different acronyms, I guess, but what this ultimately means is it's important from a protection and a prevention perspective to look at three different things. One of them being confidential confidentiality, another being integrity, and another being availability. And what we mean by this is when we're looking at data, it's important to restrict who has access to the controls and the procedures to actually make changes and actually access that, access that data. As a company operating procedure where we limit that as much as possible to who just needs it, we'll obviously ultimately provide us with a, a smaller kind of footprint to look after from that side. Integrity, again, making sure that, again, we have the relevant people, but also understanding kind of what data they're actually accessing. And again, putting the relevant access controls in place to make sure that we're protecting that data as well. And ultimately, the availability part is making sure that whatever we put in place, whatever procedures, processes, technology we have, don't impact the availability to the end user, the customer, making sure that that seamless um, methodology is, is easy to access again so that um, we, we take care of that from a operational perspective as well. When we look at other best practices uh, around prevention, obviously application control, I just mentioned that, um, user access control, limiting what permissions certain people have. If people don't need permissions, obviously not providing those to that user really making sure that that is audited on a, on a frequent basis to make sure that the relevant controls are in place. We know that employees uh, can enter the company, they exit the company. We need to make sure that that's constantly evaluated to make sure that the right people have the right application control. 
Obviously, application patching is really critical. Operating system pack, uh, patching is also really critical. There's obviously constant threats, new vulnerabilities discovered. It's really key as a business to make sure that we're understanding our change control procedure, our patching procedures to make sure that that's in place, to make sure our, our operating systems and applications are up to date to the latest threats within the space. Um, certain other things like Microsoft Office macros are a key vector for malware delivery. So it's important to obviously evaluate those. Are they up to date? What do they do? Um, how can they be fine tuned to limit the impact as well? And again, constant exercise of application hardening is really critical to make sure that those applications um, are protected against the latest threats as well. Obviously, limiting the extent of attacks. Um, if somebody were able to get into a certain system, for example, it's important to limit the impact or the extent in which they can then go forward and impact other systems in the organization. So it's really critical to restrict admin pr privileges, uh, maybe give service accounts, limit the service accounts abilities within that application space. So that again, if somebody were able to get into your organization, then they can't go forward and then do more harm as well. We mentioned patching operating systems being a really critical piece. I would imagine that a lot of organizations here today on this session have a frequent patching uh, system. But again, it's really critical to put that in place. And multi-factor authentication is pretty much a given now and should be kind of best practice for your applications, making sure that there's another form of authentication prior to giving that level of access as well. Uh, and why we're here today is to really talk about, obviously, having all of those things in place hopefully can prevent and protect your organization. But again, things do happen. And it's important to have a really robust backup strategy in place that's going to enable you to recover the data should you ever need to. And that's why we're talking today as well. The good news from a statistic perspective is that 96% of companies that actually had a trusted backup and disaster recovery plan, and we're going to be talking about that, there's a need for a holistic data protection strategy. But companies that do have that trusted plan that they test and validate that becomes part of the day-to-day are actually able to survive those ransomware attacks. They're able to recover their data. They don't have to pay the ransom, which would then encourage additional attacks. So we're really a big proponent of making sure that we have this plan in place so that you can recover your data under your control without having to go and pay that ransom and encourage more attacks as well. So a little bit about iLand. First of all, for the folks that are joining this session who haven't heard of iLand in the past, uh, we've actually been in the space, the IT space, for over 25 years, and actually we've been focused on cloud and disaster recovery for the last 12 to 13 years. Uh, we're operating globally in over 10 to 11 global regions, uh, and so we have the choice of location, and we're going to be talking about off-site backups today, but for where you choose to replicate your data to. And we know that data sovereignty, compliance, security is really critical, and so you can choose from a location in the United Kingdom, in the EU, or across the globe for where you sit your offsite backup data or other data that you may be leveraging with Ireland as well. And so we have this choice across the globe. We also make sure that our services are always 100% available so that as you're replicating your data potentially from an offsite backup perspective, that that repository is always online to backup to and is always there to recover from uh, should you ever need to. And we also provide that 24-7, 365 support at all, all points in time from a pre-sales perspective through to implementation and through to an ongoing basis so that as you leverage this technology, we can get you to the right outcomes. We can help you along the way to fine tune this offsite backup solution to the needs that your organization has. And this is a really critical component to evaluate. And we're very proud of our satisfaction ratings, as you can see on screen. Uh, we also uh, really specialize, as we just mentioned, in terms of data protection, actually for the last uh, 12 years, obviously, we've been doing these services, but you can see recognition here from 2016 through to 2019 from Gartner in their magic quadrant for disaster recovery as a service. You can see Island in the top right-hand corner for disaster recovery services. And so what this talks to is our ability not only to leverage technology and work with organizations, but our ability to execute on projects. You have an outcome that you're looking to achieve as an organization. We can help you achieve that and get you up and running and really leveraging it to the full extent. Uh, we also work hand in hand with our partner on this product or offsite backup solution with Veeam. And we're actually their uh, five time winner of their impact partner of the year. We work with the, the largest number of organizations globally to put both backup and disaster recovery solutions in for their, for their solutions as well. And we do a lot of innovation together as well. So again, we have a lot of expertise in the data protection space. 
And this extends not only for offsite backups from a VMware based environment or a Hyper-V based environment locally, but we also provide backup and disaster recovery services for things like Microsoft 365, again, for on premises with VMware, uh, and also object store services if you have maybe another backup solution in place that leverages S3 object store. So, again, a wide range of different solutions that can help solve those data protection challenges and really ultimately provide you with the outcomes that you need. We also provide cloud hosting, uh, and with that cloud hosting offering, we in integrate inbuilt backups using Veeam technology so that you have that way to recover your data. And we also have cloud to cloud disaster recovery services to enable you to recover uh, your data into a secondary location. So I did want to give you a quick overview of Ireland before we jumped in. But why we're here today is to talk about offsite backup. And uh, we have our backup as a service, our secure cloud backup service leveraging Veeam Cloud Connect services. And this is directly integrated with your local location, whether you're VMware based, whether you're Hyper-V based, you can continue to run your local backups. But where Ilan comes in is we provide that cloud-based repository to enable you to send that backup data to Ilan and ultimately recover it back to your organization, again, in terms of a ransomware attack. And this is directly integrated into our cloud console interface, which is our sing single unified interface to manage all solutions that you may choose to leverage with Ireland as well. So when we talk about offsite backup, when we talk about backup in general, I think Veeam obviously first came out and talked about this concept with their customers and, and the general wider community, is it's really critical if we think back to those incidents, those ransomware incidents, the human error aspect, maybe hardware failure, things like that, it's really critical to have multiple copies of your data. And when we look at best practice, it's really critical in, in our opinion and Veeam's opinion and the wider community to have at least three copies of your data so that again, should something happen to the primary copy or a secondary copy, you always have multiple ways to recover your data. Now, if we think about where we store that data uh, in terms of spinning hard drives, which obviously are prone to failure eventually, um, to maybe NAS appliances or other appliances locally on premises, uh, it's important to have a secondary media type, a different place, should something happen to that primary repository that's locally to your site as well. So it's important to have at least two different media types to store those copies of your data, again, to mitigate against different types of failure that may impact those hardware appliances. And also, it's really critical to have one copy off site. We all know that there's various low probability and high probability incidents that may impact that local site, things like um, hardware failure, power failure, cooling failure, networking communications errors, uh, as well as other kind of issues like fire and flood that obviously are less likely but could happen. And so it's important to have a copy of your data locally for quick and speedy recovery, but another copy off-site, maybe to a secondary location or the cloud, to make sure that you can have a way to mitigate and recover that should something have location. And this is ultimately where Island is coming in in terms of off-site copy of your data in the cloud to enable you to recover that data whenever you need to. And so if we talk about the service in general, I wanted to give you a quick overview of how it works technically. So if we look on the left-hand side, you can see a typical VMware-based environment or a Hyper-V based environment with physical um, systems, hardware uh, for storage and compute, uh, sitting on top of that, the VMware or Hyper-V hypervisor, and then your application workloads running as virtual machines. Uh, and in terms of that on-premises infrastructure, you likely have production storage, and then you have uh, storage for backup systems as well. If you're leveraging Veeam, obviously that does a great job of storing that data locally in that primary backup repository, but ultimately get to that three, two, one strategy of having offsite backup data. This is where Cloud Connect comes in with the Ireland service. And what this does is we ultimately provide a cloud gateway that enables you to seamlessly within a couple of clicks connect to the cloud with a secure and encrypted uh, tunnel interface. Uh, and so they made this very simple. I'm going to show you this very shortly, but you enter simply a username and password and a host name, and you're seamlessly and securely connected to the cloud. Once we have that connection, ultimately with that same technology that if you're leveraging Veeam today or you're looking at Veeam, with that same technology and same interface, you can choose to, as you're running uh, backups to your local repository, send a copy to the cloud as just part of the workflow. It's very simple. And then we store that in our cloud repository at Ireland. Uh, and again, that's another copy of your data stored off site. Now that connection in itself is very secure um, from things like ransomware. Um, there have been some reports, for example, in the in the industry around um, ransomware attacking certain backup vendors. 
and potentially kind of causing harm to those backups. I think Veeam with this technology provided a very in, a secure and encrypted way of getting that data off site and keeping those things separated uh, from a security perspective. But what we're also going to be talking about just now as well is the fact that Veeam have added additional functionality such as its insider protection feature that enables you to, as you're storing data off site in the cloud, um, to protect against things like ransomware that may impact backup data. And so let me run you through that example here. So we've got the typical example of sending uh, data to a primary backup repository. We've got uh, the example of sending the data to a second repository in the cloud. And this works for a lot of organizations and provides great ransomware protection and recovery. But where insider protection comes in is in terms of the very rare potential for potentially malware hackers, malicious insiders, or accidental deletion to get those Veeam credentials or that backup technology credential, log into your repositories and potentially decide to delete that backup data. Um, should that happen um, in the rare instance, there may be a cause for the, for the data itself to be unavailable for your organization. And that's where this insider protection feature comes in, is because when this is enabled, iLand provides a seven day retention of any time a, a backup is deleted, whether that's just through the software natively as part of its retention policy adaptation, or whether one of these kind of scenarios happens, such as a, a malware incident or a malicious insider where they choose to delete that backup data. Anytime that's detected by the software, um, we actually store a copy of that data in a offsite um, air-gapped repository that's only accessible by Island authorized technicians. There's no access to you as a customer. There's no access to malicious uh, folks willing to do the organization harm. It's only a select number of technicians within the Island location that can access this air bubble of backups. And so if this were ever to happen for the organization, the island authorized technician could come in, choose to initiate a restore request, and once they do that, that's sent straight back into the Cloud Connect repository for you to then leverage. And so this is a really nice safety net that we really recommend for organizations to choose alongside their offsite backup solution so that ultimately they've got that holistic approach that's going to enable them to, to recover their data regardless of what happens. Um, again, with these different scenarios. So this is a really good piece to add additional ransomware protection for your organization. So if I show you how seamless it is to connect to this service, just to quickly kind of run through, as you can see in this animated video that I'm playing here, it's a simple case of just inputting the credentials that iLand has provided as part of its deployment process. So we're entering the host name. You can see that it's connecting very seamlessly via an SSL connection. Then we're just entering our credentials. So it's a, simply a username and password that you can then maintain, change, and alter as your policies dictate, and make sure that you have that secure connection to the cloud. There's no detailed networking setup needed, no kind of in-depth knowledge needed. It's simply a couple of clicks to get connected to the offsite repository. So they very they made it very, very simple. And to then see, as you can see, two terabytes of storage I had in my test environment. Once we're connected, Again, as I've mentioned, if you're leveraging Veeam today, this is a great solution because you're using the same user interface that you have the knowledge of uh, that your IT team use on a daily basis to do local or, or remote backup. It's the same thing. So you don't need to relearn any new technologies. And with this, as you're running local backups, you can then choose to run um, either additional backups straight to the cloud if you want to do some um, that just go straight to the cloud, or to fit that best practice of three, two, one to create a backup copy job. And what a backup copy job is, based on a certain frequency, as the local backup happens and completes, it will simply send a copy of that data offsite to the cloud uh, and stores that within our secure repository. And again, one point to mention that you can do here is you can choose to encrypt the data prior to transmitting it to us as a service provider. And you can choose the credentials and the password as well, so that even iLand can't see into that data. And, and again, that helps from a ransomware and a security perspective that we're limiting the access to this backup data to just people that have those credentials. And again, that's the importance of making sure that we limit the scope of access and, and what folks have access to as well. So as you can see, very seamless to once we've got connected to simply offsite that backup data. And then more importantly, again, should anything ever happen, it's really critical to be able to seamlessly restore data back really quickly. Um, uh, and get your business back up and running. So regardless of whether it's a specific email, an invoice, a critical file affected by ransomware, or it's the entire virtual machine or the disk, all of these different scenarios are covered with the solution. And so with the same Veeam interface again, 
you can restore an entire copy of the virtual machine. You can restore individual disks, or you can restore guest files back to your local machine. And so it's giving you that granular recovery when you need it, uh, and again, limiting how much you need to transmit back from the local from the cloud side, so you can get back up and running really sim seamlessly as well. So again, really quick to explore, restore that data back into the cloud. And now alongside this, uh, with the cloud repository, we always keep uh, an eye on the storage. Um, we'll go into the how it's kind of commercially priced and, and, and utilized, but um, you can see how much storage is being used within the cloud at any point in time. You can see the storage growth. You can see the status of your backup jobs, whether that's, they're successful, and audit that at all times. So you can make sure this solution is working at all points in time uh, for the business. Um, you can also scale when you need as well. So as you maybe bought maybe an initial five terabytes of storage, you need a sixth terabyte or a seventh terabyte, whatever it might be. Uh, through the console, you can seamlessly add storage any point in time to meet your business needs. So you can keep this fine-tuned to what you need to achieve and then grow that as you need to for additional protection for your organization. Alongside this, uh, with the solution, again, we mentioned it at the start, but it's really critical when we're thinking about security to also think about the compliance side of things. Uh, Island has over 20 different certifications in this space. Um, hopefully, you'll see one that meets your industry needs, but we have a dedicated compliance team that can work with your organization to, to fine tune this backup solution to make sure that it's relevant for your industry and it's meeting your specific requirements from a regulatory and a compliance perspective. And we're constantly adding to this. And all of these are available for our backup service as well. I also mentioned, obviously, that support was critical. Again, 24-7, 365 support is always available. So as you onboard with the backup service, you send the data off-site, you're doing restorations, we're always there to give you a helping hand. And we also have things like backup deployment services so that if you are new to doing off-site backup, um, or you're needing a bit of advice about how to tune these backups to, to meet the needs and, and make sure that they're as efficient as possible, our, our deployment teams, our onboarding teams, our support teams are there to help you fine tune the solution. So in terms of how this is offered, uh, we try to keep this as simple as possible from a technology perspective, but also as simple as possible from a pricing and a commercial perspective. So we use a variety of tools um, to help understand your needs. Uh, we call it iLand Catalyst. This tool gives us an understanding of how much storage you need based on your retention requirements in the cloud. And then we charge simply based on the amount you choose to reserve in terms of gigabytes. So you can reserve five terabytes, you can reserve 100 terabytes, whatever it might be. And we can come to the right figure based on that assessment criteria that we do with our cloud assessment tool. So again, it's simply based on per gigabyte price, and then you can choose to add that inside of protection, again, on a per gigabyte basis to understand and protect your organization against potential um, threats based on ransomware as well. And with that, we include unlimited bandwidth, unlimited virtual machine replication, the support, the availability, and the compliance and security aspects. So again, it's really simple to consume and really uh, helps you achieve that offsite outcome to protect against ransomware as well. So with that, um, we re really encourage you to take a trial of this service. We, in fact, have 30-day free, free trials for both our secure cloud backup product as well as disaster recovery services that we offer. And this enables you to plug in your environment with Veeam into our environment and actually road test this, see how it works for your organization, get our guiding advice to make sure that this is a success. So this is something that needs no obligation, and it's, it's a really good way to, to validate whether this is a right fit for your organization. Uh, and to, to continue that point, we actually have a dedicated page for this event, island.com forward slash free hyphen computer world. And this has links to those free trials as well as information about more services that we have um, together as a, as a partnership with computer world. So I'd really like to thank everyone for their time. I'm looking forward to answering some questions. And for the folks that have reached this end, I know your time is really critical. Uh, we'd like to thank you for that. And so we're going to be entering you into a prize draw after this session. So watch out for an email if you're the lucky winner. We're giving away a 100 pound Ticketmaster uh, voucher as well. So with that, thank you very much for your time. I'm gonna go into Q&A and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.